Simple Car Guy here and today I'm checking out two wireless CarPlay units from ENN to help you figure out which one fits your needs best. There's only $40 difference between the two, but does that mean one is better than the other? Well, let's check it out. I won't be spending too much time showing you how to install these units as it's pretty straightforward and I've done it in many other videos, but basically you just peel and stick it to your dash. And if you have the bigger unit right here, then you can also attach it to the windshield. If you'd like to see what comes in the box, I'll include that towards the end of the video. So stick around to see all of those details. Anyway, let's start with some specs so we're all on the same page. We are looking at the Enon P3 and P4 CarPlay units here. The one on the left is the 7 inch 1024 by 600 pixel display with a rear view camera and a permanently attached base. And the one on the right is a 9.3 1600 by 600 pixel display with a built-in dash camera, a rear view camera, and a swappable stand. Both are IPS panels, so both should do well in direct light, and both allow wireless connectivity from the phone. The camera also pops up like this, and you can adjust it in different ways. So, of course, you wouldn't mount it right here. You probably mount it more in the middle of the car so you can see the road. I'm just doing this so I can show you both of them at the same time. You can see that I have already configured wireless CarPlay on this device. So, I'll show you how that actually works, how to connect to one of these devices on that device in just a minute. But first, let's just go over what you can actually do on the unit. Once you are connected to wireless CarPlay, it's the exact same wireless CarPlay that you have seen on basically any other device. The few differences between a worse and better unit is how fast it is. So how fast the screen moves between the uh, you know, when you swipe around, how fast does it move? How fast does it open applications? So if you go to Spotify, does it take forever to open up? Well, that kind of what makes a difference depending on how fast the CPU is in this device. Obviously also depends on your phone. If you have an older 12 like this, or if you have a 15, there's gonna be a difference between the two. But anyway, so you can go in here, you can play some music. By default, it will play from the speaker in the back. But of course, that's not the whole point. We want these devices to play through our car. And I'll show you how to do that as well. There's four different ways of playing through the car using either of these units. Very awesome. Of course, you also get your maps. So you can have your Google Maps just right there. Uh, you can have your, let's see, Waze or Apple Maps, whatever you use, it will work on either one of these. So yeah, very easy to use. Once again, it will work with any application that's compatible with CarPlay, either this unit or that unit. Obviously, the resolution is going to be a little bit different. You can do split screen if you like. So you can have your music playing here, your map right there, and then we'll have directions at the top here where you can do search, whatever you want. Of course, you can take phone calls here as well. Uh, if you're using Bluetooth, it will go through your Bluetooth device in the car, and then you will have everything displayed on the screen, but the audio is gonna come through the car, so that's very convenient. Of course, if your car has controls on the steering wheel, you can use those as well to change the songs if you are using Bluetooth, very important distinction here. You also have Charge Point and Electrify America, so if you have an EV, you can easily look for those locations and find them on the map while you're driving. Anyway, to go back home, we are presented with the actual main screen on this unit, and here you have a few different things. You can play music directly from your device here so you don't have to connect the phone if you don't want to of course you can also just connect through bluetooth we also have a few other options like android auto which is going to be working exactly the same way you have airplay so you can mirror the phone to this device and we have mirror cast which is going to be the same thing but for android and you can see that presented in a little bit better way right here at this menu and of course you can use fm transmitter from this device to the vehicle to play the music through the car. So if you have an older car, this will work perfectly and one of the best ways to get music or get modern functionality on a very, very old vehicle. I wouldn't recommend using that as the default option as Bluetooth is gonna be much better and even better. So if you use the auxiliary cable, which does not come included with this one, but does come included with this one. So if you get your own auxiliary cable, you can just enable this and then it will transfer the audio using the actual auxiliary cable and give you the best audio quality. A few more other options here in the menu. So you have your different languages that you can select right there, display in brightness. So this does not have automatic uh, brightness control. This one does. So one of the benefits from of that one uh, compared to this one. Uh, here you would have to manually adjust it when you know if it's too bright at night and things like that. Of course you can adjust your volume here as well based on the calls or for the entire system. And of course you can reset it and set up your 
reverse mode. So it does have a reversing camera. I will not be showing you that in this video, but basically you hook it up and then you connect it to the reverse light on your vehicle. So it's a little bit complicated if you've never done so before, but you do have to find that wire and connect one of the wires in order for that to work probably better done by somebody who actually knows how to do a little bit of wiring. So if you have an older car, it's awesome because you can add Apple CarPlay as well as rear view camera when you are reversing. Very nice. Anyway, let's disconnect from this one because see right there, it's still there, very quick to respond. Connect to this one and this time I will show you exactly how it connects and how long it takes. And then we'll go over the features on this one. We're gonna select this Bluetooth device in here. So this is the P3, which is right there. And this is gonna be the P4, which is right there. So we're gonna click on that. And then we're just gonna wait and follow the prompts. Of course, you can go to CarPlay and it's gonna tell you what to actually do. Uh, so it's telling you go to Bluetooth, select the device that we just did, allow sync, and it's gonna connect. It's gonna enable Wi-Fi and CarPlay actually uses Wi-Fi for its connection. Once it connects, it will disconnect from Bluetooth. And there you go. So that's the entire setup. And to be clear, you only have to do this once. Once you set it up, next time this thing boots up, it will automatically connect to your phone and you're ready to go. So you can have your phone somewhere else, like I'm gonna put it away now. It's wirelessly connected and well, it just works the same way as that one would work. Of course, this one has a different style display. So this is a more, I would say maybe more sleek design. Of course, it has a built-in camera that pops out so you can record uh, as if it was a dash cam as well. But depending on what you're looking for, you maybe prefer this one, right? Because if you have a, kind of an opening in your dash that's about this big and there's like old stereo stuff in there you can maybe put that in there and it will work pretty well maybe you're looking for something more sleeker where your dashboard's not very doesn't have a lot of space you have a very narrow windshield then you can put this one in and it's going to take a little bit less space so it really depends if you're looking for something that's going to be more of a kind of this 21 by 9 type of design or more of a 16 by 9 it's completely up to you, whatever you prefer. And yes, once again, same exact features once you connect to wireless CarPlay that you can see in here. All the same apps, all the same everything, right? Because that stuff does not change. This device also has a few other options that you may be interested in. The first one and the biggest difference between the two, I would say, is that this has an actual camera. So there's the camera, it's recording, and then of course it just records where we can go in, we can lock a video, we can take a snapshot, we can go back home, or we can even go straight to wireless CarPlay. So you have those all, all those options just built in, and you can jump between the two pretty quickly. Of course, you can also enable and disable audio, so if you'd like to record it, you can do so here. If you don't, you can turn it off. I'm also wondering what is the microphone like? I'm sitting about, I would say, two and a half, three feet away from uh, the actual unit. So, does it sound any good? I'm going about 56, 60 miles an hour at the moment, so pretty decent speed. There will be some loud noise, but can you actually hear me talk? Of course, you can review the footage on the device, or you can take out the micro SD card and plug it into your laptop and play it from there. Speaking of footage, here is what it looks like driving about 30 minutes before sunset with heavy cloud coverage. I mentioned that as I'm sure this camera would do much better during a nice sunny day, but this is what most of the winter looks like where I live. While the colors are not vibrant, it does capture 4K footage, which most likely is upscale 1080p, but that gives you a little more bitrate and will still capture plenty of details like the license plates and street signs. The sky is also not washed out and the wide dynamic range works well for a built-in dash camera. A couple more differences between the two is that this device also allows you to uh, have a split mode. So as you can see, what this will do for you is have your camera on the right side and ready to go, always there, still live. So you can you know see what it's recording, make sure it's recording. And of course you can have your standard CarPlay here as well. And you can do the split screen here also. So you can have a triple split screen in a way. You have your maps, you have your music playing right here, and you have the actual camera on the right side 
right there. I also like that this device has an adjustable brightness, auto adjustable brightness. So we can put auto mode on and then it will auto adjust the brightness based on the lighting conditions. Of course, there's a few other options in here, the driving position. So if you sit on the right of the vehicle instead of the left, you can do that. There's some camera adjustments as well. This one also has a rear view camera, same condition. You have to set it up the same way as that one. But of course it has the front camera here as well. We also have a few options in here. So you can like turn off the, the little beeps as I'm clicking. So that's turned off. You can format the card. You can of course factory reset this as well. And if you click on the right here, you can adjust the volume fairly easily just like that. Or you can manually adjust your brightness right there. Now, how do you actually get audio to the vehicle? So here we can go to audio output right there. We have the speaker, we have Bluetooth audio, we have FM and we have auxiliary. This unit comes with the auxiliary cable. So you can just plug that in into your car if you have that. Best audio quality as I mentioned. Let's actually connect to FM and show you how you would do so for basically any vehicle in the world that has an FM radio built in. Okay, so this might be a little bit difficult to see, but here's my car screen. I'm at 106.1. As you can see, it's just static. So obviously nothing's happening there. Now on this device, I'm gonna go to 106.1. Now, if I turn the volume up, there's basically no static. So that means we can go right here. We can go back to CarPlay, go to our music, play it. And there you go, it's now playing through the car. How cool is that? So you get your music playing from your phone to this device and then sending it over FM to your vehicle. Is there some static? Let's listen for it. There is a little bit of static and you would kind of expect there to be some since this is you know, obviously not like a professional radio station, but it's very usable if you have an older car. It's very important that you use one of these cables that comes included as the antenna is built into this. I've had a lot of people complain on other videos that I've made about similar devices that it's not sounding very good. That's why, because you have not used the correct cable or, or there's some kind of, interference in your vehicle or something because most of the ones I've tested sound pretty decent from the start and if they don't make sure you select a station that has nothing on it of course if you select a station that already has a very powerful radio station on it it's not gonna work that well so there's some there's a bit of details to this but that works pretty well another thing that we can do so if you go all the way back we can of course select for better quality audio if you don't like the FM one other than the auxiliary port we can do Bluetooth. So what this will do is it's gonna disconnect from uh, CarPlay for a second, enable Bluetooth audio, right? Okay, now we go back. On the vehicle itself, I'm gonna go back and select this phone right here. All right, so now when I'm playing my music through the phone, let me turn that up. There you go. So we get perfect audio because now the audio is coming from this phone directly to the vehicle through Bluetooth, right? Goes there, but we still get the screen right here. So you can still have your map and play the music through the car through the, for the best audio quality. So you can just have this, for example, you can have your camera, you can have your map and play the music to the vehicle. So to summarize these devices, both are wireless CarPlay and Android Auto units. Both have reverse cameras included. Both can do screen mirroring. They both work on any vehicle as both support FM radio transmission or auxiliary port in addition to built-in speaker and Bluetooth. They both feel pretty snappy for what they are. They're a very good price at the moment. One thing that neither of them have is multi-touch support. So if you go to Google Maps and you want to zoom in or zoom out like that, that does not work. I don't think it actually works on CarPlay, but I'm not so sure. It definitely doesn't work on either of these devices. So what are the benefits of the P3, the ENN P3? Well, it's less expensive. It's under $100 right now, which is kind of amazing. It's a smaller footprint and it's more stable due to a heavier stand in the back. I also really like this locking mechanism so you can easily adjust it and then just 
flip it in to where it really locks it in place and it's not going to go anywhere. It has the same vertical resolution as this one. So uh, on the bigger screen, you're technically only gaining the horizontal space. It has a wired connection as well as USB port on the back. So that's pretty nice. You can plug in your phone directly and do wired CarPlay or wired Android Auto and charge your phone at the same time. One of the negatives about this one, it does not come included with the auxiliary cable, but if you have a 3.5 millimeter cable, it will basically work with this just fine. So what are the benefits of the P4? Well, it has a built-in light sensor. It has a 4K WDR front camera, which is kind of awesome with the adjustable lens. It has a micro SD card slot and it includes 64 gig card with the unit so you can record all of your dash cam stuff and it has split screen which is a very nice feature to have and it's still only $140 so both of them are an incredible deal if you ask me and it really comes down to what you're really looking for and what fits better in your car if you have a smaller dash or a spot that does not have a direct view of the road the smaller p3 unit would fit better however if you have a flatter dashboard and lots of space the p4 might be a better fit for you, especially if you can capture the road as well. Of course, all of those other points I have talked about throughout the video might make a difference for you as well. So grab those deals if you're interested in either one of them and let me know which one you would prefer to have in your car down below. Also, if you have any questions, leave those down below as well and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!